actually today I, I would like to start with uh, a new topic which is on flow through packed bed. Is it clear as to in the case of uh, um, multi particle systems, okay, so we kind of derive this in a UT is sorry UP that is the particle settling velocity under you know uh, hindered settling condition uh, goes as UT power epsilon power n. Right? Is, is that clear? Is that clear how we got this? Right? We basically said that u relative terminal goes as ut times epsilon times f of epsilon, right? We derived that. Then we said that you know ut u particle, okay, under hinder settling, it goes as epsilon square into f of epsilon. We derived that, okay. Uh, this was basically derived by bringing in the concept of you know uh, the volumetric flow rate of the particles plus volumetric flow rate of the fluid should be equal to 0 because there is no net flow in the system right. And then we define couple of terms called as uh, actual velocities and the superficial velocities okay. You can actually think about writing a, a very simple um, uh, continuity equation. So your QP which is the the volumetric flow rate of the solids goes as up superficial s for superficial times a which is the area of cross section that is available for the the entire fluid particle system to flow r that is equal to up times 1 minus epsilon because you know times a of course right there is a as well only thing i have done is i have only taken the area that is available for the particles to flow right similarly I can write UQF which is the volumetric flow rate of the liquid as U fluid superficial times A that is equal to U fluid times A into epsilon right. This basically comes from the couple of definitions of you know the superficial velocities and the actual velocities right. Um, then we went on to say that you know this F of epsilon is a function which is typically less than 1 and there are different models that people have proposed. And according to one of the um, you know models your, your f, f of epsilon was you know epsilon to the power of 2.5 right we derived that therefore your up comes out to be epsilon to the power of 4.5 and uh, we said that, you know this is typically applicable for you know your epsilon which is of the order of 0.9 or you know your phi of the order of about 10 percentage you know or a 0.1 percentage right. Um, and there are a lot people have done a lot of experiments to kind of uh, uh, verify some of these things and I said that this value of n uh, depends on depends on the kind of conditions that you are working with right. Uh, Newton's regime you know Stokes regime and things like that. Uh, there is a very famous equation which is what is called the Richardson Zake uh, Z A K I I think uh, equation in which what pe people did is they did a lot of experiments on you know hindered settling conditions and they did they worked with a lot of particles of different types and then they kind of showed that this exponent n is uh, 4.65 okay though according to theory it should be about 4.5 and experimentally people have shown that you know this value is typically slightly higher and that you know, which is about 4.65 okay. And uh, uh, other thing that we did was uh, we started talking about uh, UPS by UT okay that is a, a settling flux okay non dimensional settling flux and the way we did that was your up is you know epsilon to the power of n times right ut right okay and therefore your ups okay which is the the set the particle settling velocity but the superficial velocity right uh, goes as up times 1 minus um, let me just quickly do that okay it goes as uh, uh, up uh, times 1 minus epsilon right therefore your ups is going to be ut into 1 minus epsilon into epsilon power n right and we said if you were to plot this okay so it would the function would go, go something like that is what i had mentioned okay this is actually plot of ups by ut versus 1 minus epsilon i did a mistake in the last class it's not epsilon it's 1 minus epsilon it turns out that i can get this point and this point just by differentiating this one you know couple of times right. So, if, if I do that, so if I take this ups by ut and if I differentiate it once okay d by uh, d epsilon if you do it okay what I will do is I will get this as 1 minus epsilon into n into n minus 
you know x epsilon power n minus 1 ok uh, plus of minus 1 into epsilon power n is equal to 0 if I equate that to 0. Therefore, if I work this out I would basically get an expression for epsilon as n divided by n plus 1 ok that is your this point ok. And if I do the double derivative and if I do it, it basically you, you come you know this particular point comes across to be uh, n minus 1 divided by n plus 1 ok. And this is uh, this particular plot is uh, you know uh, what I have drawn is for epsilon sorry n is equal to 4.65 that is the Richardson Zake equation ok. And it turns out you know this particular po point corresponds to 0 0.177 and this point corresponds to 0 0.35. That means if I have you know this is 1 minus epsilon or it is in, in, in it is a, it's a concentration right or you can think about this as a, a particle fraction and if your particle concentration is less than 0 0.177 you know you will see some kind of settling behavior in your system and then you know of course there is some region where you see some other settling region and you know so so basically depending upon the initial concentration that you work with okay so the settling if you were to do this batch settling experiments you will see different behavior that I discussed in the last class right there is a uh, type 1 settling or type 2 settling or something very different from the these two everything depends on the initial concentration of the dispersion you know particle that you work with ok. Um, and in the case of uh, so uh, the other point that I wanted to mention is uh, what is called as uh, you know there are when you do the settling experiments you will always have uh, sharp interfaces ok. Uh, that is what I kind of showed in those batch settling you know experiments right. So that means I could have a case where you know I have a uniform dispersion to begin with ok where everywhere the particle concentration is the same but then you know at some point in time you would have a case where I have an interface ok and I could have a case where I have a clear fluid at the top and you know all the particles at the bottom or in general I could have a case where the particle concentration is less here uh, concentration could be C1 here and the particle concentration, uh, concentration could be bit more here right. So, in such a case I can uh, have an uh, a settling velocity velocity associated with each of these phases ok. It, this could be u p 1 uh, you can take it as regime 1 or 2 and in this case you know the settling velocity is going to be u p 2 and if if your interface is moving down with the velocity u i n t that is the interface velocity and I said you can think about writing a, a simple mass balance which basically is uh, u p 1 minus u interface ok multiplied by your concentration uh, concentration C1 in this case is 1 minus epsilon 1 uh, you are basically expressing this in terms of the you know void fraction right should be equal to up2 minus uint into c2 right. Mm -hmm. uh, if you work it out it turns out you know this basically will have units of mass per second ok because this is you know meter per second right and this is your concentration uh, volume fraction of course I can have the area multiplied on both sides right. So basically this is a is a a mass balance which basically is telling you that if you want to have a, a clear interface whatever the uh, the number of particles or the concentration of the particle that le that that will reach the interface the same number of particles have to go ok. So, so if you work it out your u i n t becomes u p 1 c 1 minus u p 2 c 2 divided by c 1 minus c 2. If I have a case where I have a, a clear fluid here and then all the particles are in the you know in the bottom region regime. So, one of the concentration is going to be 0 right if you say that C1 is 0 that is a in the top region. So, basically this, this gets cancelled you basically get up to itself right. So, therefore, when you do this settling experiments you know, when you are following the interface velocity right uh, which is basically you know I said that right if you have different interfaces there could be a case where the, some interfaces are basically you know uh, falling as a function of time there could be cases where the interface is you know rising as a function of time all I need to do is get this slope ok that is you are plotting you know uh, height versus time I get this dh by dt that is basically my interface velocity and from that I have a way of calculating uh, the settling velocity ok. So, maybe we will stop here at this point. So, we have talked about uh, uh, you know different things in the in the previous lectures right we talked about settling of single particles then we talked about how do we extend that to an aggregate of particles and then again extension of the similar concept to cases where we have multiple particle systems right. So, now um, we will talk about uh, uh, a concept called uh, flow through uh, packed beds ok um, ok and uh, in a sense packs are, packed beds are, uh, are kind of it is a simple concept uh, you know what you basically mean by packed bed is you basically have a, a column 
okay it could be a pipe it could be you know a container right and uh, this column is basically filled with this is your column okay this is your packing material okay now um, uh, i had mentioned in in a few lectures ago uh, that uh, the reason why the pack beds are used are because they want you know they provide as a way of improving the contact between two or more phases okay i could have a case you know for example say that you know i have a, a, a say a simple pipe okay a hollow pipe and in which you know i want to send two liquids okay um, like say uh, you know maybe uh, uh, some some methane or you know some some liquid and a gas for example if i want to en ensure a proper contact between the two if i were to have a simple pipe without any of these abstraction you know you know obstruction so there's not no proper contact between the two phases right two fluid phases okay so therefore uh, the one of the main advantages of using this pack beds is you know they essentially ensure that if you have a, a two phase or three phase you know uh, you know systems uh, they give you a way of improving the contact between different phases okay and uh, t people typically use this for cases where there, there's a gas liquid operation or a liquid liquid or a liquid solid okay depending upon you know there are a lot of cases in chemical industries where you come across you know different you know uh, uh, fluids that are going to be you know you want them to be in contact either liquid 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 solid or gas solid so in such cases people make use of these devices to ensure that you know there's a proper contact between the different between different phases okay um now so this is again a, a schematic that i picked up okay this is an example of a case where people have this is an you know absorption column okay uh, again typically what you'll have is you know some uh, packing material in the, in in the, in the pipe uh, there is some liquid that is coming in there could be some gas that is coming out you know if your objective is to either you know take out if 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 you have a if there's a gas for example if the gas has some uh, uh, some trace amount of chemical for example mist you know or or if there is some for example if i want to uh, have a clean gas that, that that i want to come out okay if there is some unwanted gas that you want to separate out okay one of the best way of doing this would be use of this packed bed okay let it pass through the pass up through the co column and then you know use use an appropriate liquid which basically takes out this unwanted you know material okay and then it comes out at the bottom and again you can you know subject it to whatever purification that you want to do okay and people use them for the scrubbing or or, or degassing operations okay which is to remove traces of gas vapors or chemical mist absorption column people use it for cat, you know catalytic reactors okay if you really want to uh, if you want to have a, a particular reaction that i want to occur over a solid surface okay the best way of doing this would be again you pack them into these columns okay and as you uh, let either a liquid or a gas through this column on the surface of this catalyst you know some reaction may occur right so um, yeah as i said right they are used for distillation operations a lot of mass transfer operation in you know, absorption is one example i i talked about chemical reactors separators okay so so the, these have very wide applications okay and uh, and uh, um, and you will have couple of experiments in the in the next semester to look at you know different aspects of uh, flow through pack beds uh, 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 okay so now before we uh, go uh, to uh, so uh, the reason why we are interested in uh, in a packed column is because um, like we talked about pressure drop in a in a pipe right now that now if you have a pipe that is filled with you know particles right again now the fact that you know there is much more obstruction for the liquid to flow through your delta p is going to be much much larger compared to the you know case of flow through pipe right so so the ultimate aim of the some of the thing that we are going to discuss is to look at how do we think about pressure drop through this such systems and we are going to think about some ways of analyzing you know flow through the packed bed and you know how do we uh, kind of correlate the pressure drop to different parameters like you know the structure of the packing you know flow of the uh, flow rate of the liquid and you know few things like that is what we are going to do okay so so it turns out that you know uh, so you know of a, a particular operation called filtration okay which is some kind of a, it's a special case of flow through packed bed right uh, again filtration one of the simplest thing that you can think about you know when people do this coffee or tea at home right you when, you, when you strain you know, the coffee or, or or the tea okay on the you know strainer right you have some solid bed that is okay initially it's a it's a clean you know cloth or something like that at some point in time you know as you start start straining it you have a, a bed of solids that forms right so ultimately you know the the liquid starts flowing through the the bed of solids that is formed on the surface right so so therefore we're going to talk about filtration at some point okay we're going to say 
that you know whatever uh, you know working equation that we develop for packed beds, we can actually modify it to you know suit the need of filtration processes. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. Before we do that, I'm going to talk a little bit about what are called as packed bed internals. Okay, uh, so let's look at uh, the construction. Okay, so what you're seeing is a as a picture where there's a packed column. So this is uh, two regions where there is a particle that are kind of packed, right? Right. The, this is solid particles which are put in the column, and on the bottom you have a, a support grid. Okay, because I mean this grid is basically required because I want to hold the packing, right? If I if I don't have this grid, all these particles would fall off, right? So then it, it, typically there's a support grid. It's a, typically a porous plate, and again people use different kinds of design to ensure that you know there's a proper flow of fluids through these you know fluid through, through these columns. Um, at the top, somewhere here, and somewhere here you have what is called as a, a liquid distributor or liquid redistributor. Okay. And the job of this liquid distributor is to ensure that there's a, a proper distribution of liquid across the entire pack bed. Okay, that's the job of these liquid distributors. And uh, if you look at uh, somewhere here, they have what is called as a liquid collector. Okay, and these the job of this liquid collector is you know if you have a really long column, uh, what may happen is that you know um, uh, as it flows through, uh, what typically fluid does is it wants to go through the the least resistance path, right? It it will find out, you know, some least resistance path. You know, after some time, of course, if you look at the top of the bed, there could be a proper distribution of the fluid because of these liquid distributors. Okay. However, if you go down the column, if the column is really really high, you know, pop, you know, this liquid takes some preferential paths. Okay. And these are the least resistance path. Okay. So one of the way to avoid that would be you put in this liquid collector. Okay, the job of this liquid collector is it basically collects the liquid that is coming out down down the packed column, and then you know it kind of feeds it to a liquid redistributor. Okay, so these operations, you know, these kind of uh, internals are really required to ensure that the flow rate across the different cross sections of the bed is kind of uniform, so that you know there's a, a proper contact between the the fluids that you're trying to work with. Okay. Um, Okay, so uh, this is a different kind of liquid distributor. Okay, as I was mentioning, uh, liquid distributor basically provide uniform distribution of liquid. Okay, and as I said, okay, if the height of the pack bed is very very large, okay, there may be something called as a, a channel link. Okay, the channel link is what I said. You know, when the when the liquid starts taking some preferential paths, that means there is a a larger flow in one region of the pack bed versus the other region. Okay, that's when you have what is called as a, a channel link, and channel link can be Avoided if you use these redistributors and things like that. Okay, so these are four different types of uh, distributor people use. Um, these are uh, some kind of a porous pipes. Okay, this is a pipe through which the liquid is flowing. But you know there are regions where you know I, I let the liquid into the column. Uh, these two, uh, this and this, these are what are called a notch type distributor. Okay, if you see this right. There's a wedge kind of thing, right? If you look at these things, so there's a uh, the construction is something like this. Okay, there's, it's a it's a it's a parallel channel like that channel like that, and then there's a, a notch. Okay, and and basically you lick, you fill the liquid in this you know these uh, you know channels, and then through the notch the liquid basically comes down. Okay, uh, that's the case here and here. Okay, this is an example of what is called the orifice uh, you know type of liquid distributor, which basically has porous you know uh, um, um, porous openings, right, and then through that the liquid basically flows. Okay, so these are what uh, people typically uh, you know use, and and as I said, right, the objective of this liquid distributor is to ensure that to avoid channeling and to ensure that there, there's a improved efficiency. Right, that's the whole whole point. Um, now, I just want to define a few terms. Okay, uh, first term that we're going to do is something called the porosity. All of you already know this concept, but I still want to do it quickly. Okay, so porosity it's also called as a a void fraction, okay, void fraction or porosity, or people also call it as voidage, okay, is defined as volume of the voids in the bed, okay, divided by the volume of the pack bed, okay, uh, and volume of the voids in the bed, I can basically write it as volume of the bed minus volume of the uh, solids, right, and therefore I can write this as 1 minus volume of the solids divided by volume of the a packed bed 
okay. And volume of the solids divided by volume of the packed bed, we know that you know is the a packing fraction of the solid, right. So that is a, a typical definition of um, you know the void age. Now, um, so how do we find void age in the packed bed, okay. So I say that you know I have a column, okay. I am going to say that hey look you know I have a column that is filled with and this is my packed bed, okay. And uh, I want to find out what is the void age, okay. What do you think is the, you know, can you think of some ways of by which I can measure the void fraction, okay. Experimentally you can think of couple of different simple ways of doing it, okay. What you do is, so you take an empty column, okay, and with a packed bed, what you do is you start going on filling the fluid, okay. You start going on filling the fluid. So what uh, fluid is going to do is, if I have a support plate, okay, uh, and it will start occupying all the pores in the bed, right? The the liquid that I'm going to add is going to basically occupy all the pores in the fluid. Now what you do is, if you have a some way of collecting that fluid and then measure its volume, okay. If I know if the it's a cylindrical column, if I know the length and the cross section area, right, I can get the volume of the bed. And if I measure what is the volume that I have collected, right, that is one way of doing it. Other ways of doing this would be you finish up your pack bed experiment, okay, and ensure that you know your liquid is basically kind of filled up to the height of the pack bed and we basically drain the fluid, right. So, you can different ways of doing doing that. Now, uh, it turns out that you know, porosity is one of the uh, really important parameters uh, that is, uh, you know, uh, kind of help in the you know uh, kind of achieving, uh, so when I talked about this efficiency right, um, um, efficiency when I when I when I mean by what I mean by efficiency is that you know if you are able to ensure a, a better contact between the different phases that is when you know I can say that, you know the efficiency of the operation that I am looking at whether it is you know uh, um, reactions or whether it is you know mass transfer operation that is when uh, that is what I am looking for right. To ensure you know uh, 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 improved efficiency one of the parameters that you can play with this is, is porosity, okay. Can you think of ways by which I can play with the porosity of the uh, bed. So, I have a packed column is filled with solids, okay. Now, what are the different ways by which I can manipulate the porosity in the bed, you can change the you can change the dimensions of the particle, okay. That is one way of doing it. So, he is saying what he is trying to say, let me just go back, uh, okay. So, this is a, okay. Uh, so, what you are seeing here is uh, dp by dt, okay, where dp is the a particle diameter and dt is the your, you know, if you are, have a packed bed, you can think about it as a, a diameter of the, you know, column in which the particles are put, right. Now, um, so what you are looking at is two columns epsilon for spheres, okay. I am already giving the second hint, okay. This is epsilon for cylinders, okay. Now, when you say dp by dt is 0, what does it mean, okay. That, that basically means you know I have a really large column, okay, whose diameter is much, much larger than the, the diameter of the, the particle that are basically being used for making the packed bed, right, okay. In such a case, your epsilon is 0 0.0, you know is 0 0.034, right. Uh, this value is very close to, very close to, so if you have a, a spherical particle, you have something called a, a maximum random packing density, right. That means if I have a column, I pour the particles into the column, if all the particles in the bed, right, if they are arranged in a, a random you know configuration, right, okay. So, it turns out that you know that maximum random packing density is roughly of the order of 0 0.64, right. Therefore, you know the closest that you can get if you really work with ideally this should be 0 0.36, okay. But the closest that you could get if you really take a very large diameter column and if you pull in the particles such that you know the particle diameter is much, much smaller compared to the diameter of the, the column, right. So, you can achieve 0 0.34, but you can clearly see that if I go on you know if this if I go on increasing the 
the diameter of the particle, it turns out you know this porosity basically increases, right? Does it make sense? Because you know, let us think about a simple case, right? If I have a, a column and I am going to fill in the column with exactly the same you know diameter particles, right? I am sure you know the, in this case the you know the whatever volume that is available for the liquid is very, very little, right? Okay. So, one of the way of doing this would be basically I can play with the the diameter of the you know uh, particle to the diameter of the column. But the other ways of doing this would be by using uh, uh, packing materials of different you know types. Okay. Uh, either so either you can work with regular particles, you can work with uh, like say spherical particles or, or cylindrical particles for example, or ellipsoids. Okay. You can work with particles of you know different shapes or people have kind of designed different types of packing material itself. Okay, uh, what you are looking at is this A okay, is a case of what is called as a, a Raschig rings. These are basically you know yeah go ahead. No, no when, when you say volume of the pack bed okay, this is the volume of the, so if I have a like say, um, uh, say that I have a container, a cylindrical pipe, say that you know my the packing that I have filled it is up to say length L for example okay. and if the diameter is D right, right that you know pi d square by 4 times l is your uh, volume right that is the volume of the pack bed for me okay. It is not just the volume of the, the just the packing itself and I say volume of the pack bed is so therefore, um, so, so in the in the in the example that we saw so what I can do is I can take a column of some dimension and I can fill it up with particles of different sizes that is one way of doing it okay. So, the other way of I mean this the same uh, you know one of the ways of expressing exactly the, the same experiment that I said right. I fix the column, I take I take a particle of different sizes right. One of the way of expressing that would be uh, I, I basically express it as you know a ratio of dp by dl right that is what was basically done. Um, yes yeah it, it will, it will. I think so basically no what this basically tells you is you know as long as if you were to do you, you work with any combination of you know your particle and the uh, you know the column. So, as long as you know th this is actually um, uh, I have taken from, from one of the books okay. So, uh, the idea is as long as you maintain this ratio your the value would be typically close to 0.64. I mean you know um, or the other way of doing this would be say that you know I have like say a column which is like say 100 centimeter diameter say that I am basically taking 0.1 centimeter packing for example okay. Now, if I do an experiment where I you know kind of increase the size of this by twice. So, I say I, I take 200 centimeter and if I also take you know so in both the cases you would get a similar packing density okay. So, yeah that is the point okay. So, so this is something called a Raschig ring. So, you can think about them as you know hollow cylinders right. Um, this is something called as a, a lessing rings okay. So, so now if you look at so for example, uh, if I look at this and this right uh, in terms of the shape they are very similar but only thing is in between I basically have another you know uh, 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 basically a kind of a rectangular this thing right. So, now uh, if I look at compare these two uh, this would definitely offer me a you know much more solid surface that is available for any contact right, right. If I look at this and this case okay the fact that you know I have an additional you know region there. So, I basically have more solid surface available for any operation that I want to do. So, so people have uh, using uh, Raschig rings, Lessing ring this is something was a burl saddle okay something was a, a burl saddles okay. And this is what is called as a, a Paul ring okay this is a P A L L ring um, these two are P A L Paul rings right. And this is one something called as a, a nutter ring N U T T E R. Okay, these are different names that people have. You know, these are used. These are all industrially used packings of different shapes. Uh, and as you can clearly see, there, you know, it, it is becoming more complex shape. Like if you go go from A to F, for example, the shape becomes much more complicated, right? And the reason, you know, is that you know that will again help you in, you know, playing with your, you know, solid you know fluid surface you know areas right. Um, and so, another way of so like we talked about you know this dp by dt as a parameter 
for playing with your porosity, okay. The other way of playing with the porosity is basically you use packing material of different, you know, types, okay. Uh, the rustic rings, lessing rings, okay. So, if you play with some of these things, so you'll, 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 right. So, I have a, a table um, which is uh, not the porosity, I just wanted, okay, I do not seem to have it, okay. So, maybe I had uh, something here. Uh, oops, oops, oops. I thought, okay, I, no, I had it here, right. So, if you look at rustic rings, right, uh, it turns out the porosity that I can reach is larger, okay. So, if you take bull saddles, the por typical porosity that you get is about 0 0.60, okay. And again, if you use bull saddles, okay, the, the typical porosity that you will be, be getting it will be in this range. But now, compare it with, you know, spheres for example. You, you see, for the case of spheres, if I really take a, a very small diameter particles, okay, the porosity that I can have is about 0.34. Even if I increase the, if I, if I play with the, uh, this dimension, okay, I can maximum I can go is up to 0.55. But however, if you use different shaped, you know, packing material, I can see that, you know, basically there is a, a more porosity, right. And more porosity would be good for, you know, a better efficiency of the operation or a better fluid, you know, particle contact, yeah. So, these are the rustic rings and the burl saddles are the shapes. So, basically if you go back here, right, this is your rustic ring, okay. This is your burl saddles. Correct, yeah, correct, yeah. So, so what you do is when you, when you make a packed bed, right. As I said, packed bed is basically a, a column filled with a particle, right. Now, the particles, I have a, a freedom of choosing whatever particle that I am working with. Uh, of course, if somebody is working with a, like say a catalytic reactor, uh, I would have to use a, a packing material that is a, a catalyst that you want to use for a particular reaction, right. Uh, or if I, if the, if the, if I want to basically use an inert packing, okay. Uh, that means, you know, these are not part participating in any reaction. If the objective is only to improve the liquid fluid, you know, liquid gas contact for example, okay, I would like to have a, a much more surface area that is available, right, or more porosity for example. So, in such cases what you do is you use one of these packing materials. So, you know, I can basically play with the uh, porosity that will also help you in playing, regulating the, the pressure drop through the packed bed, okay, plus it will also ensure a efficiency, uh, increase in the efficiency of the operation, okay. Um, so, any other ways of doing this? So, I, I said you can play with the, uh, the particle and the, and the uh, column diameters and I can play with the porosity. I can play with different objects of different shapes or, you know, different, you know, complex geometries and I can play with epsilon that way. Any other, um, yeah, you have a question? So, these are basically, okay, let me go back, okay. Here I showed that, you know, in this image, it looks like a sphere, right, right. I have put in a spherical particle in the column, okay. Instead of that, I can use a, a rustic ring, right, right. I can use a, a lessing ring, right. So, that was actually your column like that, but with a, right. Right, I can use that. I can use burl saddles. Okay, any of the packing, uh, you know, shape that you saw, I can actually replace that. This spherical particle that you're seeing here, I can replace with any of these things, and that will help me in regulating your epsilon. Okay, that will help me in regulating the the solid fluid, you know, contact. Okay, and it will also help me in regulating the efficiency of the operation. So, any other methods of, uh, any other methods of uh, regulating epsilon? Yeah. No, no. Yeah. No, no. Uh, when you say more porosity, okay. Uh, what does it mean to you? So, essentially the, uh, the, the volume, okay, that is available for the fluid is more, right. Now, when the volume that is available for the liquid is more, 
okay if if i say that, you know i'm using a liquid uh, gas operation okay you know of course the the part of this you know the fractional voidage that is available there will be liquid and the gas right the more the volume that is available there's more contact between the gas and the liquid right in that sense you know regulating porosity is a is a way of i mean people go for more porosity because you know if you want to really improve the efficiency of the operation i would definitely like to have more porous Mm-hmm. Correct. No, uh, like like I gave an example where if I have a pipe, right? Okay, I I let the liquid and the gas flow through the column. Okay, when people talk about this two-phase flow in the columns, um, um, people talk about. Let me just go back. Okay, when you talk about uh, two-phase flow. Oops. Okay, let me just go back here. Okay. So when you talk about two-phase flow, to uh, for example, say that you know, I have a, a pipe. Okay, I want to have uh, liquid one, or say let's say fluid one, and fluid two, that is flowing through the column. Okay, through the pipe, for example. Okay, what do you think would be the how would the flow look like? Or let's say uh, two immiscible liquids, liquid one, liquid two, they are two immiscible. Uh, say, but I would like to have a, a proper contract with contact between the two. But uh, people talk about something called a stratified flow, in which I have liquid one flowing above, maybe, and liquid two flowing below. Depends on the density of the fluid. So there's a two, right? That's one way of doing. Think, think about it. The other way of doing this would be people talk about slug flow. Okay, in which you have, you know, your 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 liquid one could be here, and you know, liquid Two will be outside, right? This is liquid one. Okay, so it basically goes this, right? Now, if you look at these two cases, the liquid-liquid contact actually is happens here, right? You're only at the interfaces when the liquid, there's liquid contact. If I look at this slug flow, there's a little bit better contact because you know I'm I'm able to break the stream into you know maybe you know these slugs, okay? But however, you know your liquid-liquid contact is still limited. Now, if I, you know, what is the best way to ensure that you know, you know, uh, there's a larger you know, uh, kind of a interaction between the two fluids. Okay, when I say interaction, not the you know the interaction in terms of the molecular interactions, but I would like to have a, a proper contact between the two. Okay, but the best way of doing this would be you know using these devices where you know you can ensure that you know there's a, a better interaction. So. Why do you say the less porosity, more the break? So I mean. See, I you can't think of the so in this case, are you talking about porosity in this case? Why would you talk about porosity in this case? Because because if I look at this, you know, your entire column is filled with the liquid. So in that sense, you know, there's no pores as such, right? I I wouldn't say. Would you really call it as break the fluids? No. I mean, you know, it's, you have it's just like you know, just like a liquid flowing through a column, you should imagine that you know there's also a a liquid flowing through a bed of solids okay there are channels available for the liquid to flow through okay now as it flows through if i have one or two different fluids okay and you know it will have a you know it will basically give more chance for the liquids to interact let it put put in that that way Okay, so the other way of doing this would be uh, looking at something called as a, uh, a random packing versus structured packing. Okay, so if you take a, a column, you just pour your like, you know particles into the column. Okay, they pack in a particular way. Okay, and uh, typically, if you again there are ways that there are actually kind of prescription as to how you should fill the the packing into your uh, you know uh, column. Okay, and if you follow some procedures, you will. Basically, end up with a truly random packing, okay. And other way of doing this would be what is called as a structured packing, okay, in which I have a, a some predefined way in which you know the the solid material is basically arranged, okay. So uh, I'm basically you know showing you uh, the random packing of spherical particles here and the structured packing of spherical particles here. And as you can clearly see, that, you know in this case, the typically the porosities that you can achieve would be of the order of 0.36. You know, if you do a you know a random packing here. But however, if you look at this case, 
you know packing fashion is more if I assume a particular kind of packing you know right your porosity is going to be right. So, so basically the other way of you know playing with your you know uh, a porosity is go for random versus structured packing. Uh, people typically do not use particles and then do a structure packing. So, what is done in the in, in the um, okay, so I will come back to this point. So, this these are some kind of a, a structured packing that people use. So, these are what the what you have is you basically have structure which are either made of some uh, polymer or it could be made of some of some met metal okay in which you basically you you if you look at these pictures right the, the solid part right the, the 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 solid material that make the pack bed there's a you know a, a particular way in which it is constructed constructed right okay and that that forms the solid in the pack bed okay and whatever pores that you see here right there is a four pore spaces through which the liquid basically flows through okay so and the idea of using going for random versus structured packing is that you know the the surface area available for the the liquid and the void space i can basically manipulate right like just the point that i made earlier so i can basically play with the void edge plus also i can play with the the surface area that is available for the the fluid fluid contact by using these devices okay um, so we have defined this parameter called sphericity and it turns out you know if you look at when you're going to talk about this delta p which is a pressure drop through the pack bed uh, the sphericity also becomes important parameter okay uh, we have defined what it is already uh, it is defined as sp by vp okay of a sp by vp of a sphere divided by sp by vp of the the particle right and sp by vp for the sphere is 6 pi dp and sp by vp that is for the particle okay that is your sphericity and uh, uh, and if you see here um, if you look at uh, spherical particles or you know or, or cubes or short cylinders your sphericity is 1 okay and if you go for rastic rings okay this is L is equal to dp that is your you know your your if you have this rastic rings right that is your cylinder kind of thing. So that is your length and that is your dp right. So if L is equal to dp uh, if it is a short cylinder um, sorry rastic ring. So if you I can play with these dimensions I, I can actually play with the, the porosity right 0 0.53 in one 58 in one case you know 0.33 in the other case. Burl saddles typically have a sphericity of 0 0.3 okay and these are the the kind of uh, industrial packing that people use and people also work with uh, uh, for example, you could you can have a, a a column in which you know you may be working with uh, uh, some kind of sand particles, or you could be working with coal dust, for example. Okay, in such case, again, you know your sphericity would vary. Okay, and there are ways by which, as we discussed in the class, there are ways by which I can um, um, basically calculate sphericity. Right. Uh, other term uh, similar to the multi-particle system, there's a, a concept called superficial velocity. Uh, which is basically defined as uh, the volumetric flow rate of the fluid through the column divided by the, the cross sectional area that is your Q by A. Uh, it is also, also called as a empty tower velocity okay. Superficial velocity is also called as a empty tower velocity. This is the velocity of the fluid through the column when there is no packing okay. That is your Q I know if I have a column if I have a way of measuring what is the flow rate through the column and if I know what is the, the cross sectional area that Q by A is what gives you the superficial velocity right also called as a empty tower velocity. But the average velocity of the fluid through the pores is basically your superficial velocity divided by epsilon right because epsilon will tell you what is the, the cross sectional area that is available for the liquid to flow through right okay that is the, the actual velocity or the the average velocity of the fluid through the pores okay. Um, yeah so that is about it okay I just wanted to briefly introduce you to the concept of uh, packed uh, beds today. Uh, we have talked about uh, what are packed beds uh, where are they used. We talked a little bit about packed bed internals that there is a there are liquid distributors, liquid collectors you know and you know some concepts like that. Um, we defined a few parameters. Um, uh, voidage or the sphericity. We talked a little bit about um, um, uh, superficial velocity 
and we also talked about different types of packing and different types of packing material and what are the different methods by which people manipulate your porosities and you know the fluid solid contact area that is available for the fluid. Okay. And we will stop here. Uh, on Monday we will have, uh, we will talk, start to talk, we will start talking a little bit about uh, pressure drop through the bed. Okay. We will, we'll, uh, um, uh, what we do is um, we are going to take the analogy of flow through pipes and you know we, we kind of apply that to the flow through pack. Okay. That is what we will do on, on Monday. Yeah. Thanks.